Hi, my name is Alistair Lee. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at scheduling seminar rooms in Adobe Connect 9.0. It's important to schedule all of your seminar rooms to prepare for Adobe Connect 9.1, which will require all seminar rooms to be scheduled in advance, either by scheduling the room itself or by using the events module to schedule an event associated with the room. Any seminars that are scheduled in advance will seamlessly transfer to Adobe Connect 9.1. If a seminar room is not scheduled, then it will be placed in standby mode. Standby mode allows you to prepare your room, but no more than five participants will be able to join. A scheduled seminar room can have a capacity of up to 1,500 participants when scheduled. The actual capacity of the room is based on your seminar license. We've got an FAQ on adobeconnect.com to answer more of your questions about the requirements around scheduling your seminar rooms. But let's take a quick look at how to actually schedule an Adobe Connect seminar room in Adobe Connect 9.0. From Adobe Connect Central's homepage, I'm going to click on the Seminar Rooms tab, and I'm presented with a list of all of the different seminar licenses I have. Each seminar license is represented as a folder, and I can create one or more seminar rooms for each license. But of course, only one room can be used at any one time. If you want to hold more than one concurrent seminar, you're going to need multiple licenses. These licenses also determine the capacity of the rooms that I'm creating. And if I want to see the capacity of any of my different licenses, I can actually click on the license folder itself, and then click on License Info, and I can see that this particular license has got a capacity of 200 participants. I can also see the expiration date of this particular seminar room. I want to create a brand new seminar room though, so I'm going to go back to the seminar list, and I'll click on the New Seminar button. Now this looks a lot like the new Meeting Wizard, and in fact it is pretty much identical. There are a few differences though. Just like the new me meeting wizard, though, I'm going to give my seminar room a name. So we'll call this the uh, marketing seminar. We can give it a custom URL. That is optional, but it's something I always recommend for any customer facing seminar rooms that you're creating. We'll call this one marketing. We can give it a summary. And just like a new meeting wizard, we've got a start time and duration. But unlike creating a new meeting with a seminar room, this is becoming incredibly important to make sure that we are specifying our start time and duration because we're actually scheduling this seminar. So I'm going to schedule this seminar for later this week, let's say the 18th, 2013, and we'll set it to be one o'clock. I can also see the duration, which is currently set to one hour. That works perfectly for me. I'm going to keep that duration just where it is. I've got the ability to select a template just like I do when I'm creating a new meeting. And these templates uh, inform the room as to what it should look like when it's first created, the, the different layouts that it should include. I'm going to select the default event template, keep that just as it is, keep English as it is. And because this is a seminar room, I'm going to set the access to make sure that anybody who's got the URL can just quickly, easily enter my seminar room. Now I've got another option here that I don't have when creating a new meeting called expected number of participants. And this tells Adobe Connect how big the meeting is going to be. I can set it to be a regular meeting, which will fit up to 600 different people, or a large meeting. You'll notice this option is actually grayed out for me because my license capacity is only 200. If you are holding a meeting over 600 people, though, we recommend that you select this large meeting uh, radio button, and this will ensure that the back end, the server, is optimized for that particular meeting. I can set the audio conferencing settings here if I've got any. In my case, I'm simply going to be using voice over IP. So I'll click Finish. And we've actually created our seminar room. This is all we need to do to create the seminar room. If I'm going to be reusing this room, which is certainly possible, this room is persistent, just like an Adobe Connect room. Anything I put into this room will also persist. If I want to reuse it, I can simply click on the Edit Information button and edit the date and time that I'll be using it. It's important to schedule any of the seminar rooms so that they show up on the seminar calendar. And that means that uh, if anybody else tries uh, scheduling a seminar room for the same date and time, they'll be made aware that there's a conflict. I can see the seminar calendar by clicking on, obviously, the seminar calendar link at the top of my screen. I'm looking at today's date, so let's go over to the 18th. I'll actually just select it from this calendar view. 
and I can see my schedule uh, my scheduled seminar room shows up right at one o'clock with a little bit of buffer time on each side now if I was to try to schedule another seminar room by clicking on that seminar license clicking new seminar we'll give this just a quick title new seminar room also choosing the 18th at one for one hour and we'll let's make this again one o'clock in the afternoon and I'll hit finish Adobe Connect will let me know that there is has been a conflict so I can see here that there is another seminar scheduled for that exact time and it recommends that I choose a different date and time so that's a quick look at creating seminar rooms in Adobe Connect 9.0. Thanks for watching.